Hello, welcome to Masses Digital. My name is Aaron, and today we are going to see how to work with the components in T24. We are going to use Design Studio. I have a blank workspace in Design Studio. For you to create components, you need first to have a TFJ project. So you can click here, you create a new project. And you can either have for Marvin project, depending on how you want to package your project, or you can have just a general project. I'm going to create a general project and let me name it TAFJ project, for instance. Okay. Then you click finish. This is not a TAFJ project yet, okay? Because we cannot create component, we cannot do anything. For us to make it TFJ project, we need to do right click, toggle, TFJ nature. Now we need to have our TFJ home configured. So it detected that I have TFJ home. I can now import the configuration file for this for project using the existing TFJ properties. For instance, this one open then i do next as you can see uh, this actually is coming from the tavj properties which we just imported so we have a reference to t24 lib the classes are going to be on c terminals tavj data tavj classes so it's in tavj home data tavj classes this is also defined in your properties. We just keep the way there. This we don't change anything here. Then we do next, and also the database configuration is read from my configuration file. I can just test if they are correct. Oh, as you can see, I'm able to connect to the database as well. So then the rest is to click on here on finish. Okay. Now this is turns our project into TFJ project, okay? I don't need this folder which has been created. Let me delete it. Once you have your TFJ project, you can now create a new component. To do that, you do right click on your project, new, then either T24 routine component, or you can use T24 component for the structure. This is a recommended way because this gives you a structure to your project. Now, the rule is you need to have a module. Then under that module, you can create components. For instance, under EB, you have different modules. Under ST, under FT, those are modules of terminals and under those modules, Terminus has created a lot of components. You can also create your own module. And under your module, you can have different components. For instance, let's create a module called MTD. This is going to be our module, MTD. And under this MTD, we can create different components. For instance, training. Then finish. Now, this will create a new file which has the full name of your component, which is module.component name.component. This file is located here under definition. Okay. Uh, this is the main file in which we define different artifacts uh, which we are going to create as a result of our component. Artifacts like uh, routines, functions, you can have uh, tables, you can have uh, different things, constants, all of that can be defined in your project. Now let's try to understand this for the structure. So our component is called MTD training. The definition file is MTD Dot training dot component. 
And uh, the JAL, which is going to be generated once we compile our component, is going to be mtd underscore training dot jar. The name of your folder is the name of your jar, which is going to be generated. Under this, you have data. This is where you put T24 records, for instance. Whatever data, you create them under here. Then here, we put the definition of all the definitions. For instance, this we have for now one file, but you can also create, for instance, a table. If you're creating table definition, we can also put it under here. We just do new this and you, you select table. Okay, we won't see this later. And we have also folder called source. Under source, we have now two folders, but depending on your version, Design Studio, you may have a third folder called Java. Especially when you're doing Java development, you can create that folder Java. And in one component, one component you may have JBC source codes together with Java source code. There's no problem. And by conversion, we put all the JBC source codes under private. Again, this it does not reinforce anything. And you have two folders, private and public. In my use case, I put all the source codes related to subroutines and function under private. But even if you put them under public, they will work, okay? These are just the naming, the name of the folders, but they're not enforced when you are creating subroutines. So feel free to use any folder, but I create my subroutines and functions here. And I use public normally for, let's say if I say have a file, which is not a subroutine, or if I, let's say I have a program, and under test, you put your unit test. Hope it's clear. Now, in T24 programming, the first component probably you, you create is, or the first artifact probably you create is a subroutine. How do you create a subroutine? We said we create subroutine under this, okay? Now, depending on uh, your project, Maybe this has been enforced that we cannot compile if it's not a part of component. That's a default configuration, which we can, of, of course, change. Okay, so let's see how to create a subroutine. So we start by defining a method. There are different keywords. If anything is defined, if a method is defined as a public, it means that it's accessible from other components and from other modules. We have also module. If a method is defined as module, it is accessible from other components which are part of the same module. We also have keyword private. Private means it's only accessible within this component. So that's, that's how it's supposed to be. Now let's create our first method for our subroutine. We're just going to have a simple subroutine. Uh, for instance, let's name it uh, greeting. This greeting, which is going to accept one inward parameter called, let's say, called the name. And it's going to output one parameter, so called message. And we say it's going to refer to a JBC artifact called. mtd.creating, okay? So this is the name of the actual subroutine which is going to be created. So you can copy the name and you go here, say new subroutine, say new, you do finish. And when you're creating subroutine, we need to make sure it's a part of this component. So we do, we do that by using the keyword package. So package, and the name of the, the package is mtd.creating. 
training. Then this has two parameters. The name, the second one, is the message which is going to be returned. Okay. Of course, subroutine returns. You can remove the keyword. You can even remove this keyword and we can put just return. It will still work. Okay. Okay. How do we want? Let's just keep it simple. We're going to say, okay, we receive a name. If name not equals to empty, then uh, we are going to say a message is going to be hello, then we can cut in that with our name. And let's also add exclamation. And if you didn't supply the name, then let's just say hello. Okay. Of course, there are different ways to test our program. Now, um, we can write a simple test program. Just as a test greeting. Now, how do we use our component? We use the keyword using using and the name of our, of our module is MTD, the name of component is training. Now, you can just say MTD dot training dot, if you click dot, you see anything which is relevant. So in this case, it's training, which accepts one parameter, say, say, say John, and it returns the message which we can output uh, here. So we do run. Voila, we have hello John. Now, if, if we run it again without any parameter, I should see hello. Let me just copy this. And I paste and I remove the name we should see now hello john and hello okay hello john then hello all right thank you i hope you have enjoyed watching this video you know how to create component and how to use components in the next video we are going to see how to create other artifacts like properties tables and so on stay tuned see you next bye bye